Ever wonder how martial artists can defend themselves so effectively? It's all about mastering precise techniques. Strength and add to it, but the crux lies in the exactness of movements. Be it a quick punch or a forceful strike, practice refines these maneuvers, yet safety is paramount. Learning under a trained instructor ensures corrective moves, mitigating injury risks. Stay tuned to learn some of the key techniques used in martial arts for self-defense. Martial arts cover a wide range of techniques, and today, we delve into some of them. From the swift punches of boxing to the high kicks of taekwondo, each martial art has its unique style and method. Punches and strikes form the core of many martial arts, and when executed with precision, can be highly effective in both offense and defense. Then we have the kicks, which can be as varied as a straightforward front kick to a spinning roundhouse. Throws, another vital aspect of martial arts, require not just strength, but a deep understanding of balance and leverage. Grappling techniques, often seen in wrestling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, emphasize control and submission. Importantly, all these techniques are about precision and control, not brute force. They're the result of years of practice, honing every movement to perfection. Now that we have an overview of the techniques, let's get into the details. Scene script. Each martial art technique has its unique application and execution. Let's delve into the heart of martial arts, the techniques. Picture a martial art technique as a language. Each punch, kick, and block is a word. And how we combine these words forms the sentences of our martial conversation. First up, we have punches and strikes. Whether it's a straight punch in karate, a hook in boxing, or an elbow strike in Muay Thai, these techniques are crucial for offense. The power of a punch or a strike doesn't just come from your arm or leg, but from the whole body moving in unison. Twisting your hips, pivoting on your feet, and exploding forward is where the real power lies. Next, we have kicks. From the front kick to the roundhouse and the infamous spinning back kick, these are the long-range tools in your arsenal. Kicks demand balance, flexibility, and precision. A well-executed kick can keep your opponent at bay, or it can be a fight ender. Now on to the blocks. In martial arts, defense is just as important as offense. Blocks aren't just about stopping an attack, they're about redirecting it using your opponent's momentum against them. From the high block to the low block and the outside block, these techniques can save you from a world of hurt. Lastly, we have the breaking techniques. These are not just for show. Breaking techniques demonstrate the power and precision that a martial artist can achieve. It's about striking the exact point with the exact amount of force. It's a testament to the control a martial artist has over their body. While we're discussing these techniques, it's crucial to remember that they should always be practiced under the supervision of a trained martial arts instructor. Training without proper guidance can lead to injuries and ingrained bad habits. Remember, these techniques are not just about physical strength, but also about mental focus and discipline. And that, dear listeners, is the true essence of martial arts. Let's recap what we've learned today. We've delved into the fascinating world of martial arts, exploring the various techniques that martial artists use, such as punches and strikes, for self-defense, sparring, and breaking techniques. We've also looked at some of the equipment used in training, like the speed bag, heavy bag, wave master, body opponent bag, and the Wing Chun wooden impressive dummy. As we've discussed, these techniques are not just about fighting, they're about discipline, control, and most importantly, self-defense. They require precision, skill, and a deep understanding of the human body's capabilities and limitations. That's why it's crucial to practice these techniques under the supervision of a trained martial arts instructor. This not only prevents injury, but also ensures that you're using the proper technique. Moreover, it's important to remember that martial arts should always be practiced responsibly. It's not about showing off or proving how tough you are. It's about developing your skills, improving your health and fitness, and learning how to protect yourself and others. In conclusion, martial arts is not just a sport or a hobby, it's a way of life. It's about discipline, respect, and self-improvement. So keep practicing, keep learning, and keep developing your skills, always with safety and responsibility in mind. With the right training and mindset, martial arts can be a powerful tool for self-defense. Always remember, the goal is not to fight, but to defend.